Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another behind the scenes unboxing video. Honestly, pretty pumped to make this video. Unboxing new gear with you guys is one of the perks of this job. You know, I love taking you guys behind the scenes, showing you what's coming up on the channel, getting first impressions together. We've got some good stuff today. Today is a redemption episode. You'll understand what I mean by that. Do me a favor, whack that like button. That really helps out with the erratic bat flight that is the YouTube algorithm. Let's see what we have to unbox. All right, first box. Don't mind how messy everything is or uh, this little project guitar pile <laughs> to the right. A lot of projects in progress. Take this as a sign I haven't forgotten. I'm actually working on things, not just unboxing more things, but that takes us to this thing. Do you think it's fragile or uh, what do you think is going on with this? Good God, man, this is excessive. <laughs> uh, this box had an overprotective mother. Okay, let's open it up, see what we got. Oh, hell yeah, we've unboxed a box and it's fragile. Okay, unboxing this box round two. I apologize if you can hear the rumbling in the background right now. We've got a thunderstorm coming through, but look at that, man. So this is the new Sterling SR50, I think it's called, because the Cutlass is the CT50. This is the Stingray version, and I'm only somewhat familiar with Ernie Ball Music Man models, but I believe the main difference is the pickup configuration. The Cutlass is HSS. This is a dual humbuckered Strat type, but done in a very non-Fender way. Sterling's Ernie Ball Music Man, uh, they don't feel like Fender guitars, at least the recent ones. I tried the CT50 a while back and I loved that guitar. It had a roasted maple neck with an oiled finish. If you've never tried Music Man guitars, that's why people love them. Those necks are unreal. So that was really cool before they were only doing the roasted maple on the CT50. And this year they've launched the Stingray version. And when Sterling asked me if I wanted to check it out, I was like, yes. Yes, I do. It's low-key a miracle they still want to work with me after that Petrucci review <laughs> we moved. And this time, I've even got its big brother to compare. Got the fluff guitar and the budget fluff guitar. I'm not really a Strat guy, but I love this guitar. I play it so much. I think it's because it's got a lot of Les Paul features in a Strat. It's made in the USA. It's not cheap. I think it's $2,500 right now. It's hard to keep up with prices with inflation. And this is about $600, I want to say. So about a quarter of the price. The Music Man has stainless steel frets. I don't think the Sterling does. It does have the roasted maple neck though. And honestly, man, they both look really good. The Music Man has a lot more bird's eye figuring in the headstock and actually a lot of bird's eye figuring on the back of the neck. The Sterling is more plain roasted maple. But taking the figuring out, if you covered both names on the headstocks, and I guess you ignore the bridge cover, but you'd be hard pressed just by looking at them to tell which is which. And here they are from the back. Actually, the Sterling has a darker roasted maple neck, but there's no artificial differentiation with the shape. The headstock shapes are the same. They've taken a lot of care in this. The serial number is even engraved in the neck plate, just like the Music Man. And I don't want to get too bogged down in the details because I'm going to talk all about this in the review. But it seems like this neck shape is a little bit thicker than the one on the Music Man, but the overall feel is very, very similar. Yeah, this one's definitely thicker. But yeah, quick quality check. I couldn't really find any visual defects apart from little things like that under the finish. Or like here, but honestly, man, it's so small. Oh, I guess um, this pickup selector, I don't think it's intentional that it goes horizontally instead of vertically. Uh, that's not really a problem. I can rotate that later. I gotta say, I'm generally not a huge fan of these vintage style bridge saddles. The way the height screws stick out, it just digs into your hand for palm mutes. But if the rest of the guitar is good, I'll live. Spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. With the roasted maple neck, hopefully we shouldn't have to use this too much, but that's always nice to have. Of course, some locking tuners. These should just be standard on every guitar. Honestly, man, very, very impressive. And this metallic finish too. Love that. Overall, I just love the look of this. The combination of the metallic control panel and the plastic pick guard, that's dope. Like, I don't know what it is about a metallic control plate. They do it on like Fender Jazz basses and I've always loved that look. Can you split the pickups? No, you cannot. That's something manufacturers are throwing on just about every guitar these days. In fairness though, the music man, you can't do that either. The guitar comes in a Sterling gig bag. I swear, this says Sterling. <laughs> Give me a second. There we go. Perfect. Doesn't really come with any case candy, just the tools and the trem bar and one solid ass looking guitar. I actually visited the Sterling factory back when they were made in Korea. It was my first time in Seoul. I got drunk with the owner. 
<laughs> it was a fun time. Had to drive along the Freedom Highway to get to the factory too. That was wild. But anyways, checked them out. Wasn't a huge fan of them at the time. But in fairness, they really weren't making guitars like this. Oh, I forgot to even check the frets. Feel good. Nice. All right, one last little flyover because we do need to move on. If this is anything like the CT50, but dual humbucker, I'm excited for this one, man. Really excited to plug that one in and do the full demo on that. Almost as excited as I am about today's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Didn't even lube up, just went straight for the segue. So yeah, let's take a quick second and thank Ridge for sponsoring today's video. If you've watched as much YouTube as I do, you've probably heard of them before and how they're redefining the wallet because traditional wallets, they kind of suck. They're big, they're bulky, collect all sorts of useless stuff, and that just doesn't happen with Ridge. And they're not just a sponsor, this is the one that I use every day. I love the Ridge design. It's sleek, small form factor that can fit into your front pocket. The plates made of aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber, or RFID blocking to block scammers from stealing your information, and they're held together by a durable elastic band. The quality is excellent, and to back it up, each wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee. And they aren't just dragging the wallet into the modern era, they're doing it to keychains too, with the key case. Basically, it's a wallet for your keys, and it's classic Ridge in design. Slim, lightweight and durable. There are loads of colors to choose from to match your style and they're always adding more. I'm using the Forge Pacific. I got my buddy Navy Aluminum for his birthday. My brother uses the same one. They both love it and this is still Pringle's favorite. So if you want to see why so many people are switching over to Ridge Wallet and love it, head on over to ridge.com slash agafish and use my code agafish for 10% off and free shipping. Link will also be in the description. Of course, click in that help support the channel by letting them know that I sent you, and that in turn helps fund the fun projects you see around here. So thanks to Ridge for sponsoring the video, and while you're checking them out, let's see what else we have to unbox. Next box. All right, this one looks a little more unassuming than the guitar boxes, but it's one that I'm really actually quite excited about because of what it means coming up on the channel. Let me explain. Let's open it up. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. So this here is a bunch of stuff from WD Music, shout out to them, not because they've sponsored any of this. I freaking wish though, hit me up please, I buy so much stuff from you. Excuse me, Kosh. But basically, I have bought a bunch of stuff, because you may remember, I bought this crappy thing. <laughs> Made me really realize what people were talking about when they uh, started shooting on Gibson's Norland era. Like you can see this thing is kind of made of wood, and then there's an outer layer of plastic basically but we've got this one here and we've got one at wendell's the one at wendell's is even more trash i'm gonna be basically restoring both of them but in opposite ways the community actually came up with this idea so this one is going to be more traditional gonna keep the original finish it's got a lot of character gonna put more uh, pafe style pickups in there and the other one is going to go full modern, and for some reason Koshi is fascinated with the plastic packaging. But for both the projects, and the Electra LP, and the Paul, and the 1965 Melody Maker projects, we need a ton of parts. So I've just gone ahead and ordered a bunch of stuff, control knobs, pickup selectors, strap buttons. Another big reason I order from WD, their selection of pick guards is actually crazy. Who the f just has pick guards in stock for a f***ing Sonics? They do. And uh, it's hard to tell in this packaging, but they're actually different materials too. They have a ton of different materials, but for what I was going for, this one is going to go on the modern and... Again, you can't really see it, but it's simulated anodized metal. So it'll look like anodized metal, super modern look. And this one is going on to the vintage triple ply black and cream. So it's going to go on this one and then maybe like aged nickel hardware or something. We'll see. Haven't really decided yet, but this means that we can at least get started with uh, working on these projects. So that's just a little update that I wanted to give you guys. There's been a lot of questions like, oh, is this just a reaction channel now? No, I'm actually working on the shit you guys have subscribed for. So, you know, it just takes a while. There's a lot of moving parts, literally. So yeah, make sure you subscribe. You got notifications turned on. That way you don't miss any of these updates. Rest of mod build vlogs coming very soon. Last box and potentially redemption for FedEx. Cause the last time they delivered one of these, they did so after putting a big old hole in it. But this one looks in much better shape. I'm actually pretty excited. I've heard these are a lot of fun. So let's open it up, see what we've got. So 
All right, redemption success. I'd say that's looking better than the other one. <laughs> that was heartbreaking, man. They've also changed the soft case. This feels more rigid, and the inside is also um, kind of a cloth. This feels more like a soft case. Like, it's still pretty rigid, and the inside has this nice velvety plush. Feels like a microfiber blanket. So comfortable. So this is the Lava ME3 acoustic guitar. And from the way they presented it, from the way they're packaging it, it takes a lot of inspiration from you know, Apple it takes a lot of inspiration from tech products. They're calling this a smart preamp, so you've got a bunch of effects, you can change the tone. I think these inlays even light up as well. So you can use it as a regular acoustic guitar, or you can do wild extra sh with the preamp, or at least that's the idea. So it's a smart guitar, and they're not the first company to try to make a smart guitar. And every time one pops up, there's always that same question. Why? Well, I wanted to know the answer to that question too. So that's gonna be the idea behind that demo video, just you know, does this need to exist? Does this add anything truly beneficial? Or is it just a collection of gimmicks? Even if it is a collection of gimmicks, is it actually fun to use? Because not everything needs to be logical and useful. I mean, case in point, Tone Mountain. Does this need to exist? Absolutely not. It's complete overkill. But is it fun? Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, they've taken the tech product approach, but... When it comes down to it, it's still a musical instrument. It's still a guitar, or at least it should be. So is this actually fun in a guitar sense? Like, is it good to play? Because you can have all the cool tech in the world, but if it sucks as a guitar, it's fucking useless. Theoretically, with this big sound hole, It's actually got a pretty deep sound to it. So the entire thing is made of carbon fiber, and I'm not a materials expert. I don't know if it's good carbon fiber or not. I would guess from the way the other one turned out in shipping, there's more durable carbon fiber. But the real benefit with this is that unlike wood, this should be more resilient to temperature and atmospheric changes. You know, wood expands and shrinks a lot with temperature changes. Depending on how bad it is, necks can even warp making the guitar completely unplayable forever. Something like this though, you really shouldn't have to worry about any of that. There's not even a truss rod adjustment system. That being said though, one area of concern I'm seeing is that the action seems pretty high on these upper frets. And I don't see a way to lower the bridge or anything, so I guess the only solution would be to file these nut slots down. Seems like a pain in the butt. Damn, this fingerboard is clean though. Unpopular opinion, I love rich light fingerboards and fingerboards made of composite materials. They're really hard, really smooth. You can make them really dark, so they end up looking like just a very, very nice piece of ebony. And they feel like it too. Um, frets seem pretty well polished. I mean, it looks like they've actually taken the time to make a guitar, which sounds ridiculous. But sometimes in their quest to move guitar forward into the technological era or whatever, that's something companies forget to do. So, anyways, redemption for FedEx. I'm excited to see what kind of wild stuff we can write with this thing because it is super different compared to anything else that i've had on the channel <laughs> it's super different is always great for writing inspiration but yeah weird looking space age guitar thing can't wait to write something with it so that'll do it for this unboxing episode we've had some action-packed episodes before and this one was more kind of subdued i'll be honest the backlog is ridiculously long right now and i don't want to take on new projects and just not deliver for you guys. So yeah, not too much new gear this episode. It wasn't like that one where both the Matt Hafey Origins and the Adam Jones Standard made appearances. What a ridiculous episode. I don't know how I'm ever gonna top that. But what we did get is gonna be crucial for upcoming videos that I think you guys are gonna really enjoy. And shout out to my wonderful patrons for supporting the channel. It's been amazing during this new period where I'm trying to balance being a content creator with being a new dad. Honestly, I couldn't do that without the support. And so if you really like what I do, want to join them, link will be in the description. YouTube has also enabled memberships for this channel. Sure, okay. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with that. I want to do something for you guys, like, you know, custom badges or custom emoticons. But until I get that sorted, it's just a way to leave a tip to support the channel. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for memberships, leave them in the comments. In the meantime, social media, Discord, and affiliate links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.